Round number 17 of the 2002 CART series saw the series go overseas and down under to Australia where they would tackle the iconic Surfer's Paradise Street Circuit. Coming into the race, points leader Cristiano D'Amata already locked up the championship with his 7 wins on the season, but there were still a couple of race victories left on the table for the remainder of the year. Weather conditions were great for practice and qualifying, but on race day, it was very rainy and miserable. Cart found themselves in a predicament as they really needed to get this race in for a variety of reasons. Teams had pretty strict plans regarding logistics as the series raced the very next weekend at the Oval in Fontana, California. As well as the organizers of the event were obligated by contract to have the race course cleared up by the next morning so regular traffic can flow. The cart officials decided it would be a single file start for the race due to the conditions. So here we are despite the conditions ready to race and Cristiano D'Amata and Bruno Giancaro would lead the field to the green flag. And look at that crowd down on Honda Hill in the Honda hairpin the final turn before they swing onto the front straightaway and face the green flag in the hands of chief starter Turn Jim Swinto. It appears to be growing lighter and we may have an opportunity for this track to dry. Now look at the field trying to find clear air that Bruno Shakira seems to think it's a two by two start. Making a big move up the inside. Looks like he's by Cristiano going down into one. What a move by Bruno Shakira. And we have big a huge run. accident on the front straightaway. Several cars have come together and the track is blocked. There it is. Big accident. We saw cars flipping right in front of us as they came by. Red it's flag. It's going to be a red flag. One of the players' cars, Adrian Fernandez. Looks like Tora Takagi. Michelle Jourdain. I think that's Takagi that's upside down. That's Michael Andretti's onboard camera. There's Andretti. Jimmy Vassar. That's Jimmy Vassar's car upside down. Andretti coming to his aid. Carpentier. Here comes Tagliani. There's Tora Takagi's Horrible machine. Crash. A lot of the crew guys coming over trying to help out. Helmets, fire suits. It's Michael Andretti. They're helping Jimmy's out of his car now on a fire at the back. Vassar's car came down on top of Andretti's. See Christian Fittipaldi's crew in there helping out as well as they tend to Tora Takagi. What an absolute disaster of a start. As you saw the front of the field get stacked up behind Cristiano D'Amata, as a lot of drivers were anticipating the green flag and when Cristiano D'Amata was gonna take off, but that stacked everyone up and a combination of that with all the spray with how wet the track is, just created a bad situation with that very low visibility and cars were essentially just running over one another. This was an extremely scary situation with multiple cars flipping upside down but the card officials did give the teams an opportunity to either fix their cars or pull out their backup cars so they can restart the race and for the most part everyone would the only two exceptions being adrian fernandez and tor takagi who both got pretty injured in this accident with multiple broken bones fernandez broke two vertebrae and tor takagi had a broken pelvis and bruises on both hips Here's another replay from our host broadcasters, Channel 10. Oh, Dominguez, uh, the last car to arrive on the scene, scattering cars everywhere. Just a battering ram. Here's another look at the multiple car accident. That's Takagi flying through the air in red and white. Everything's all already been triggered now, and it's so difficult to see. These guys were just planning on the start, and all of a sudden, they're running this thing at full speed, or our three-quarter speed just to stop the race cars. Now, Christian Fittipaldi told us moments ago that his car was damaged as well, bringing the total to 10. There's Jimmy Vassar's car upside down after coming to rest on Michael Andretti's. Andretti and Patrick Carpentier climbing out to assist their stricken colleague. There's Carpentier's car coming to rest. That is Mario Dominguez coming from the rear. He started last in the field. Absolutely horrifying accident. There's the onboard view from Michael Andretti's car as he gets into the back of Carpentier. All of a sudden, these cars just start st stacking up in front of Michael, and he's had nowhere to go. 
And we've been told that, all again, all the injuries are non-life-threatening. If you look closely in that scene when they were loading Toro Takagi, you saw him squeezing the safety worker's hands. And in an accident like this, if you even say anything about a sore neck, you're on a backboard with a neck collar before you can even breathe. And it's just the ultimate precaution. And so it looks more serious. Hopefully, it obviously is serious, but the word is non-life-threatening. After a very long red flag for track cleanup and the teams to make repairs or get a backup car ready, the race was finally set to restart. The distance was shortened from 70 to 50 laps. And on the plus, conditions have cleared up and it is not currently raining as these drivers are set to return to the track. However, there was more rain on the way to the racetrack and some of it pretty heavy. Essentially, this race was restarted starting from scratch as if that big accident in the beginning never happened, but the officials elected to start the race under the yellow flag, so the race was officially underway, but the drivers were not up to speed quite yet, as lap 1 and 2 would be under yellow before the race would finally officially go green on lap number 3. Cristiano Damata takes the green flag, Bruno Jancara about 15 car lengths behind, the field well spaced and we are underway. It's going to be a race of strategy and brains right here. Everybody being real conservative. Cristiano taking a bit of a lead out there. Tony Kanan and Kenny Breck right up on the gearbox of Bruno Junquera. So they're through two, so now they can pass. Looks like Dixon might have been taking a look on PT. Was taking a look at PT. Scott Dixon, very uh, low. Big move up the inside. Kenny Brack up the inside of Tony Kanan. As you can see, the start of the race was pretty underwhelming and pretty calm and tame. But after what happened on that start, I do not blame the drivers or cart officials for starting the race like that at all. But hey, we finally got some green flag racing. The first driver to find trouble would be Mario Dominguez as he overshoots turn 8 and goes off into the runoff. But he would continue. It's honestly amazing that that car is still running because that's the same car that he used as a freaking battering ram. Him. In that first accident, he was the one who came flying in and essentially flipped toward Takagi. And this won't be the last you'll hear of Mario Dominguez in this one. Paul Tracy would be the next one to find trouble as he goes for a spin and as he's trying to get his car turned back around in the right direction, he ends up hitting Scott Dixon, but the contact was relatively minor. But would you expect anything less from Paul Tracy? By lap 10, the rain returned to the track and it was coming down pretty good, resulting in visibility being very bad, especially along the front straightaway. The drivers wouldn't even be able to complete this lap before cart officials elected to throw the yellow flag due to the conditions. The leader Cristiano Damata and other drivers elected to hit pit road here, unknowing what was about to come before them. As by pinning here, they can make it all the way to the end of the race on only one more pit stop. So it was essentially a no-brainer for most of these teams to hit pit road during this time. Some guys would stay out though and Bruno Giancara would take over the lead of the race. Conditions were so bad on the racetrack that the drivers actually had to ask the pace car to slow down its pace a little bit as it was that treacherous out there, even under caution. As the cars continued to roll around under yellow, one of the most bizarre things you'll ever see is Oriol Servia's car catches on fire as the engine randomly started running rough and he ran into some sort of fuel pickup issue. All this heavy rain unfortunately couldn't put the fire out for Oriol Servia as he pulled off in a runoff and he was done for the day. As the field continued to roll around under caution, Bruno Giancara would eventually pit on lap 18, with Christian Fittipaldi and Mario Dominguez coming in a couple of laps prior. This would return the lead to Cristiano D'Amata, but unfortunately, there was still no timeline of when we'd be able to return to green flag racing. As the field continued to roll around under caution on lap 24, Scott Dixon had to bring his car down pit road as he saw suffered electrical problem that would put an end to his day. Now here's where things get interesting and somewhat controversial. While the race remained under caution, CART made it mandatory for every driver to pit every 20 laps. When they made this decision, the hope was that at some point that they would be able to go back green flag racing, and they wanted it so everyone made at least two pit stops. 
and this was 100% a questionable call by the series. And it definitely put some teams at a disadvantage. However, other teams like Michael Andretti's team thought they played it perfectly as they pin on lap 16 and they figured that the race would be called at its original half distance point of 35 laps. So it wouldn't matter that they would have to pit on lap 36 because they figured the race isn't going to go past that. On lap 30, Cristiano D'Amata and several others had to make their mandatory pit stop and Michael Andretti would assume the lead of the race. But at this point, card officials still had no idea if they were actually going to stop the race after lap 35. And that was just kind of an assumption. As we approached that lap 35, newly crowned champion Cristiano D'Amata ended up going for a spin and it just shows how treacherous the conditions are out there even under this very very long extended yellow flag now this is where things get pretty controversial as they approached lap 35 the yellow flag remained out and there was no word if the race was going to end or not michael andretti was confused whether he should pit at the end of this lap or not because he had to make a mandatory pit stop on lap 36 and as the team was trying to get word the card officials told them that the race was going to be a 41 lap race About to say he has no choice. Actually, he does have a choice. Conditions permitting. So obviously the team was furious because Michael would be forced to come in and make that mandatory pit stop, giving up the lead at the conclusion of lap 36. So at the end of the lap, Michael and several other front runners made their mandatory pit stop. This would give the lead to Mario Dominguez, who was good to go to the end of the race. So as long as he could keep it behind the pace car, he was going to pick up his first career kart win. And that's exactly what he was able to do. As they ended up calling it after 40 laps and Mario Dominguez would pick up his first career win. Well, us Speed Channel gearheads have a pool from week to week on the Kart FedEx Championship Series trail. You know, pick the winner, top six, first out, dark horse, all that sort of thing, pole sitter. I guarantee you. Well, let me put it this way. I would bet an awful lot of money that nobody picked Mario Dominguez to win his first race here today. But it appears that is exactly what he will do. <laughs> what a wild way to win your first race after essentially being a battering ram with arca brakes in that first big wreck repairing the car having the race restart going off in the runoff and just somehow getting lucky with the strategy and being in the right place at the right time and picking up the win a total of 31 laps were ran under caution to end that race and we only saw seven total green flag laps throughout the day this was the slowest racing kart history with an average speed of 55.8 miles per hour this race was just another huge blow to the kart series that was already desperately trying to tread water and to stay afloat with everything that happened at texas in 2001 and teams defecting over to the irl as team penske already did it in 2002 and cart was just essentially on a huge downward spiral they did end up changing the rules in 2003 because of this race where they made it legal to call a race prior to halfway but only half points would be rewarded but that rule was not implemented by indycar after 2008 during the reunification well that's gonna do it for today's video thank you guys so much for tuning in i really appreciate it if you like indycar history make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you want to support the channel in a bigger way you can become a member for as little as 99 cents a month and you'll get access to exclusive perks I hope you enjoyed this one. That's all for now. Take care, everyone.